All right, let's try this again. This is the third take. What's up, Rita's Trevor and Dave? Today, I'm going to teach you how to make a besom. I'm going to go over a little bit of the history of it, what it's used for, and how to make it. Stay tuned. All right. You need to get some twine. Cut two pieces. One, about two foot in length. Another one, about four foot in length. Three to four feet. Okay? I kind of started already just to get it going. Take the two foot piece. Take your bundle. Lay it on your stick. About halfway quarter to halfway up the stick, put the small piece underneath it, and then tie two or three knots, tie it tight, okay? Take your long piece, same thing, just to hold it in place. Just do one, just put it on there once, tie one or two knots, keep it in place. Then you start wrapping. Take the long piece, go under, and over and under and over till you're about halfway down your twigs. And remember, this is there's a, going to be some excess, so we're going to trim all that down when we're done. We'll tighten it up and we'll, we'll trim it up. So a little history about the besom. And this is funny. When I did some research on it and stuff, the word besom actually comes from Scotland, 1600s or somewhere around there, whatever. And it's used to describe an unruly girl, or a, a girl of ill repute. I don't know what, just an unruly girl, right? So it'd be something like, I lassie, you're a wee besom, something like that. And then... Somewhere through the ages, when they traveled to England, in the story of witches there, that the witches would make these besoms, but they would take mandrake root, okay? And other hallucinating plants. And you know there's a lot of them out there, by the way. And they would rub it all down the stick. And when they did that, they would trip out hard. So I think what happened was during the ages how the, the story traveled, the word Beeson being an unruly girl, I think the story was an unruly girl, young girl, came out of her cottage yelling and screaming, just tripping out, carrying a broom or a stick and yelling at people. And I think that's how they associate the, the besom with witches. Because witches are supposedly bad people. So, now, don't quote me. I'm not a historian. So don't, you know, freak out. So now, these witches would rub this LSD on their stick, the broomsticks, and run around the fields just high as a flying kite, just tripping out. Now, I don't know where this changed, but back in those days when these witches rode their brooms and stuff, and they stuck the sticks in the rich AJs and nether regions, they had the stick this way, with the bristles facing forward. That's how they would ride their brooms. So I don't know if it's through Hollywood or through what, but how the broom got changed around. So that's why when you have a besom in your home, you hang it upside down or whatever. Okay. So that's where that comes from. And the way people thought they were flying, apparently the story goes, is because these witches were so fucking high and they're praying to the gods and telling the gods how high they want their crops to grow, that they would be jumping up in the air 
with the besoms between their legs. So people would see him going, what the? These witches be tripping. So that's where apparently they thought witches were flying from. So anyways, onward and forward. Wrapping this. We keep wrapping it and wrapping it and wrapping it. Okay. So after wrapping it, you can start trimming the excess off. It should be something like this. Now, it doesn't have to be pretty. This isn't the Martha Stewart School of Design. It's just Witchcraft 101. So, but this is a good project you could do with your kids, you know, and teach them how to, they could swipe away bad energy, bad feelings, whatever. It's a good, it's a good thing. So, okay. Just a, a quick recap. When you're wrapping it, don't cut anything off yet. Leave it, leave the ends long. Because as you're wrapping it, when you get to the end of the one, one wrap or whatever, you want to tie it to the end of the other one. Okay, tie the knot. And you keep doing that all the way up. Now, when you get to, as far as you, you think you want to go, take two, two last pieces. Okay, put one at the very end of the bristles to where you want to think you want to trim how far down. And then put another one in the middle to bunch them up some more. So now we can start trimming all the excess off. So just cut the little strands off. Or you can leave them on, it doesn't matter. Because when you're done, when you're done, you can bling it out. Put some pentagrams on it, uh, tree of life symbols, which I have both of, so I'm gonna hang those on this things like that. And then also when we're done, we're going to cleanse it and charge it. So cut all these off. Okay, good. Now, like I said, trim the droop. Ah, fuck. Don't cut your hand. That's not good. Ow. So, it's like getting a haircut. I think I'm cool with mine. It's good for now. Now, remember what, what witches use these for today when we use them is to get rid of negative energy from our homes. Right now, I don't know. If there's a particular way to do it. I've seen people do both ways, but when you're cleansing your home, you start from the very back of your house, okay, the very back room or whatever, and the object is to sweep, right? But Some people do it as a figurative thing and they, they hold the besom up in the air, sweeping the bad, bad vibes out. Some people actually sweep on the ground, pushing everything out. And you keep going from the back all the way to the front door and out. You could chant when you do this. Whatever incantation that you have that you want to say, totally up to you. I, I, I kind of do and just, you know, it's like it's like almost like smudging your house. When you smudge, same thing, you know. So now I'm going to bling it out, I'm going to tighten it up a little bit, bling it out, cleanse it, and charge it. Okay. So basically done with mine. I added a pinnacle that's made out of twigs on here. Uh, little tree of life emblem. So now, I love the ones that they sell in the store, the cinnamon ones, they smell so good, but there's no personal touch to those. 
this is something that you created. You're, all your energy is going into this. So it's already being supercharged. It's amazing. So now, but I do love the smell of the cinnamon ones. So I've got some cinnamon, some ground cinnamon. Sprinkle it on it, okay? If, for those people that are allergic to cinnamon or anything like that, don't use it. Use rosemary. Uh, use some sprigs of rosemary or crush them up. I love the smell of rosemary. You can do that. You can do whatever you want. A couple drops of cinnamon essential oil. And now... We're going to cleanse it and enchant it. I'm using Palo Santo because I love it. Uh, it's of my people. It means Saint Stick. And I just, I, I love the smell of it. And being that the beast is made of twigs and wood and sticks, it's kind of only natural, right? Give yourself a quick cleanse. My people, we like to wash our hands in it. Get rid of any, any negative energy. And I don't think I have any today because I'm having fun doing this. And I cut myself worse than I thought, but whatever. So, kind of shake it. If you put cinnamon on it, go and shake it a little bit off. A little bit, it's going to fall anyways. So, we'll give it a good cleansing. And then you can recite any chant if you want. Whatever comes to your mind. But here, here's a cool one that I like. Wire cleansings. Sweep, sweep, sweep the ground. All negativity shall be bound. I banish all that is profane. Only positive shall remain. And that, my friends, is how you make a visa. And now to hang it on my front door, keep all the negative, negative energy and vibes out. God bless you guys. Thank you for watching. Remember, do no harm, take no shit.